Hey, Joe from Home Studio Corner here. What does compression sound like? If you're starting out and you've never been able to really identify what you're hearing, it can be really frustrating. So we're going to talk about that in this video today. EQ is something we can all wrap our heads around pretty easily. We've all had the little slider in our car where we can turn up the bass or turn up the treble. So that's easier to understand and to even hear, perhaps. Compression isn't terribly intuitive. In essence, all compression does is turn down a signal when it gets too loudly. There's a threshold, the signal crosses that threshold, which is just an arbitrary level, and when it crosses it, the compressor turns it down. So you've probably heard that a thousand times. What you've also probably heard from me and others is compression turns up quiet parts and turns down loud parts. Well, I got this question the other day, Joe, a compressor only turns things down. It's a compressor. It's When it crosses the threshold, it turns down. So how in the world is it turning up quiet parts? And I thought, that's a fabulous question. Let me show you. And we're going to demonstrate on a couple different tracks here in Studio One. So the first is a snare drum track that I recorded uh, a couple weeks ago. Put a compressor on here. I'm going to turn it off for now. So here's the raw snare. There's no compression on the way in. This is just a raw, plain old generic snare drum. Got some nice, lovely ring to it. So I'm going to demonstrate what compression will do in terms of first turning it down. Then we'll talk about how it turns up quiet parts. So let's go. Let's set a compressor setting on here, something kind of aggressive. We'll go like 5 millisecond attack, 10 millisecond release, bring the threshold way down, and just let it smack it around a little bit. So now if we compare that with the uncompressed sound, you'll notice the version without the compressor is louder because the compressor is just turning everything down. Here it is without compression. Here it is with compression. Clearly, it's way quieter. So what's the point? Well, there's this cute little knob on a compressor called the gain knob. Sometimes it's called makeup gain, which is a better description. The idea for that is you're turning things down with a compressor, but the goal isn't really to turn things down as much as it is to shape the tone in different ways that you can't get with the raw track by itself. And when you use compression and it's turning down parts of the sound, it sounds different, but it does make it quieter, so we use the makeup gain knob on the compressor to turn it back up. So the Studio One stock compressor has an input level and an output level on it. So you can see the input signal is this loud, the output signal is a lot lower. So I will use the makeup gain to just match the two. That white line, now it's a little more even. You can obviously do this with your ears too, but that's a nice way to visually see that you're in the ballpark. So now if we listen, You'll hear when I click the compressor on and off, it'll be at the same volume. It sounds different, but it's the same volume. What do you hear in the compressed sound? You hear the actual hit of the snare is quieter relative to everything else, but you're hearing more of the ring, the sound of the drum resonating itself, and you're also hearing more of the kick drum and the tom that he's playing and everything else in the room because all that stuff was very quiet, but now it's been turned up by about 7.5 dB. We're smacking down the snare sound and we're turning up everything else. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe we like the sound of this snare with some compression on it. It has a snappier, kind of more just rock and roll sound to it. We want more snap, we can just bring the attack up a little bit. So whether or not that's the sound for the mix is irrelevant. You can hear how compression is making the quiet parts louder and the louder parts quieter. Now let's do the same thing on a vocal. Here's the vocal for that verse of this song by itself, just raw recording actually with this mic, the Roswell Mini K47. I took it in stride. It taught me to hide. So what are the loud and quiet parts of a vocal that could be turned up and down for potentially desirable results? Well, let's find out. Let's compress this sucker again. Bring it down. Let's go a little bit faster on the attack, a little bit slower release, and see what that sounds like. I took it in stride. It taught me to hide. 
So that second line is a perfect example of what compression does for a vocal. And it's the sound of most modernly mixed uh, rock or even country or really almost any vocal that's going to have a compressed sound to it. That's the sound we like. It's the sound we've grown to love. So listen to it again. Here it is with no compression. It taught me to hide. So taught is really loud, and then hide, I'm singing softly, and is a lot quieter. That's going to be hard to hear in the mix, potentially. Add compression. It's all roughly the same level now. It's not a lot louder in general, but the taught me, that first part is quieter, and then hide is expanded and louder because of the makeup gain. It taught me to hide. You'll notice if you look at the compressor while that vocal is going, you'll see the compressor kicks in. Here's the gain reduction there. The compressor kicks in on the loud part, and it actually doesn't do any compression on the word hide. It's just sitting there doing nothing, except it's turning it up because there's an automatic, well, there's a, there's a makeup gain engaged at all times on this track. It taught me to hide. So the first part of hide gets a little compression. The last part has none at all. It taught me to hide. Doesn't help with the pitch problems with that vocal, but that's not the point of this video. So that's it. I mean, there, we could do this for hours and days to really dive in and, and really go deep, but I wanted to give you a starting point so you can start using compressors on your tracks and start listening for those things, those loud parts that are quieter, those quiet parts that are louder, and start to develop a kind of mental vocabulary of what that sounds like and what compression does to the tracks. And then eventually you'll get to a point where you'll know when a track needs compression and when it doesn't. Two things I want to tell you about. I've got a course called Understanding Compression at understandingcompression.com. It's one of my most popular courses. Check that out if you really want to dive deeply into compression and really get a good handle on it. Otherwise, if you'd like a free resource, I've got something called Five Step Mix. It's a very short, very cool PDF that you can download that will get you on a path to getting better mixes quickly and a system that will allow you to get better mixes over time in addition to mixing more quickly. So that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.